Welcome back. My name is Myrta, functional medicine practitioner. I will be talking you through 12 easy tricks you can do starting today to beat the bloat and finally get rid of that muffin top for good from a functional medicine perspective. So rather than just looking at it from a superficial and vain perspective, we're also addressing it because it has been linked to health concerns down the line. So if you're interested in how to optimize your health and extend um, your health and lifespan, then this is for you. Today, we're in step number six. Um, if you're interested in the whole 12 steps in one go, then click the link below and you can download the full ebook um, all in one go. It's free and it has lots of extra little tips and tricks in it. So step number six today is how food intolerances can and may be one of the triggers contributing to your belly fat. So um, again, like in the previous videos, I have a lot of my patients that are skinny fat there. They have skinny legs, they have skinny arms. Um, they just have this layer of budge around their belly, they can't get rid of it, they have this um, apple shaped form. Now, a common thing I see in my practice, and that research also shows is uh, food intolerances as a trigger. What are food intolerances? Now, they're slightly different to allergies. Allergies, usually you are aware of them because it's something like that kid that has one peanut and it has to go to hospital or has to have an EpiPen with them to try not to go into a shock. Now, as intolerances are a little bit different. They, they are a little more hidden. So the difference is they're both part of our immune system that is reacting the wrong way, basically. But intolerances are much like uh, we know it from COVID. It's a rosen into um, fame, where if you they test your antibodies, IgG antibodies, to see whether you've had it or not, or whether you're protected. That's kind of the, the, the basic gist of it. Now, the same can happen with food intolerances. And that can be with healthy foods as well. That could be something more typical like gluten or dairy, but it could also be something like an avocado or yeast product or ginger. Now, if you are eating one of these foods, your body will pump out antibodies because it thinks it is an invader, like a virus, like a bacteria. Now, the immune system's response to an invader is inflammation. That's a natural way what it does to kind of try and fight it off, get rid of it. That is a good process if it lasts a few days and if it then goes away. Now, if we have an intolerance to a food and we eat that all the time, then we constantly are triggered and have constantly low-grade inflammation. And what low-grade inflammation does, it triggers something called insulin resistance. Again, if you go back into video number one, I talked about insulin resistance a little bit. What it does in just the bottom of the story is that it redirects your fat storage and makes you more prone to store fat around the waistline, even if you're not really overeating food in um, calories as such. So, and down the line, it is also important because if you're constantly slightly inflamed, it has inflammation has been linked to lots of other chronic long-term problems like cancers, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, depression, lots of things. Also, if you have food intolerances that you are not aware of, then your immune system will constantly get irritated. Remember, it thinks it is an invader. So it constantly gets irritated. And then it might at some point, if there's a genetic predisposition towards that, or there's a weakness for you, um, then it might start to uh, trigger an autoimmune disease. So it's not just about the belly fat again, but it's also long-term, you want to get rid of the underlying triggers. Now, usually there's a reason why there are all these food intolerances. Other than dairy and gluten, they can be um, they can have a genetic component to it. But if you are intolerant to other healthy foods, then usually that means that there's a problem with your gut. We'll talk about in the next video. That's um, step number seven. But for today, what can you do about food intolerances? So first of all, you need to find out what they are. Uh, if you have a little bit of uh, cash that you can spare, I highly recommend doing a test. It's a blood test. You can test for these IgG antibodies and actually know for sure what you are intolerant to and what not. Now, if you don't have that spare cash, then you could also try an elimination diet and just cut out the most commonly the, the foods that people are most commonly intolerant to. They are dairy, 
gluten, yeast products, and eggs. So those are the foods. But as I see in my practice, a lot of people aren't actually gluten intolerant and they, they are okay to eat that once in a while. A lot of people aren't actually dairy intolerant because a lot of, especially Nordic people have developed and evolved over the last um, many hundreds and thousands of years to be able to digest that. So I don't want you to just go and cut out foods that might not be necessary for you, that might um, unnecessarily restrict you. So if you can go and get a test and then you have to cut out these foods temporarily, very strictly while you are fixing the underlying problems with your gut. And we'll go into that in the next video. Now, if you found that helpful, then share it with some friends that you think that might be interested in it and need to know it, but also comment below to let me know what you would like to learn more about. Or um, if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Until next time, bye.